This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good, ev good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Frieda, North Haven's first selectman, and welcome to our June Board of Selectmen meeting. I'm joined, as always, by our second selectman, Mr. William Piper, and our third select woman, Ms. Sally Buemi. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to start by asking everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask Sally to say a few words as today represents the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Sally? Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, I just thought uh, we would be remiss if we didn't uh, mention the importance of today. I'm sure many people saw some of the solemn ceremonies throughout uh, the world today. Um, and I just wanted to uh, make a couple of comments. Uh, you know, I'm a history buff, especially of World War II. Uh, and I just think that it's important for us to remember the significance of, uh, of uh, D-Day. Uh, you know, those um, beaches codenamed, uh, we'll, we'll never forget the names. There was uh, Utah and Omaha where the Americans landed and Gold and Sword Beach where the British landed and Juneau Beach where the Canadians uh, landed. Uh, and you know, the, the success of uh, D-Day really was not a certain thing. Uh, the, I think the world held its breath that morning as the first uh, infantry regiments uh, waded out uh, into the waters. And uh, I just think it's important for us to remember that today there were 10,000 casualties, which is uh, usually um, defined as killed in action plus uh, wounded, 4,500 of which were killed on this day, 2,500 Americans and 2,000 British and uh, Canadians, and of course tens of thousands of additional casualties in the weeks and months thereafter as they, uh, um, the Allied forces moved inward um, and eventually liberated uh, Paris in the end of August of 1944. Um, a lot of people who are students of World War II think that uh, the defeat of Hitler's Sixth Army in Stalingrad in uh, the winter of 43 was the turning point of the war, and I think that's true, but certainly this day, June 6th, 75 years ago, was the turning point as far as the beginning of the end. And so I think it's appropriate that we remember this day, and I would just like to close my remarks by urging young people especially to learn a bit about World War II and D-Day. As the years and decades go by, I, I, I am concerned that the memories of uh, a knowledge of, of history seems to be fading. So I urge young people especially to uh, educate themselves and understand why there were so many ceremonies on this very important day. Um, and you should all know that our esteemed second selectman is a West Pointer, Bill Piper. He and I have had many engaging conversations about uh, military history. And so, Bill, do you have any thoughts you'd like to add? Yeah, the, uh, thank, thank you, Sonny. Thanks for, thank you for, you know, for your nice comments. I think we, you know, all of us, as we look back, uh, have had, you know, we've just had, uh, we've just had a Memorial Day parade. We think about all the members of our families, you know, and all of our friends um, and their, their uh, families and their family members who have served. So it's, a, it's like a milestone event where, you know, you think about past, um, past history and, and one of, the, one of the, um, the events that always comes to mind is, is, is D-Day, is June 6, 1944. But the thing that hopefully comes out of it is, is that, um, you know, um, even, though, even though it seems like peace is hard to find, um, you know, yesterday's enemies hopefully can be today's friends. And, uh, you know, and you look at the Japanese and the Germans who, you know, we fought in World War II, um, you know, and, and, and they are now are strong among our, along with the British and the French and maybe a few other European nations are among, South Koreans are among our strongest allies. So, you know, I think there's always hope for, 
you know, for peace and that um, even though people may not get along today, I think there is that hope for tomorrow. And I think that's, you know, why those men went to war. Um, you know, both uh, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, and the wars that we've fought since then. So uh, good day to remember um, and also to hope for the future. So thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Sally and Bill, for your, your fine comments. And I'll close with this. Last Friday, we were at the high school, and I spoke in front of all the high school students at what was called Eyewitness to History. And I had not acknowledged that it was the 75-year anniversary of D-Day. And in front of about 350 to 400 students, we, I had behind me on stage veterans of various wars. And I spoke about how it's very sad that every day over a thousand veterans are passing away, most of whom are World War II veterans. And I said to the students that in school studying history, it's primarily reading books, today's environment going on the internet. But what we had in back of us last Friday were individual, live, human storybooks. And these people who speak are telling their story. And sadly, when they pass, their storybooks that close forever, that contain multiple chapters of their rich lives and what they did to help us live in the life, liberties, and freedoms today. So thank you, Sally, for asking for some time on this. Thank you, Bill, for your comments. We were over at the American Legion today. We donated a poster to Post 76 commemorating June 6, 1944, 75 year anniversary. We can never forget our veterans. And Sally, I totally agree with you. In the 20th century, and I've read several books on D-Day, that was the defining moment, mm. right. the turnaround. Yeah. So thank you for your comments. Thank you, sure. OK, item number three, the approval of the minutes of the Special Board of Select public meeting of May 9th. Public comments relative to oh, the agenda. Public comments to the agenda, I'm sorry. Seeing none, item number three. Approval of the minutes. I'll move the approval of the minutes of May 9th, 2019. I'll uh, second, second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number four. So a couple weeks ago, I met this young lady who's in the audience this evening at a Chamber of Commerce event. It was an after hours get together and it was a networking event for the chamber and various businesses and various, various institutions and associations. So Denise and I spoke about Alzheimer's. And Denise is with the Alzheimer's Association. And it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart because I'd like to share with you a personal story and then read this proclamation and present this to Denise. So years ago when I was in my business career, I had a beloved aunt, Jean, who passed away. And Jean had been married to my Uncle Joe for over 50 years. After my aunt passed away, my uncle gradually declined. And then my cousins had to put him in a home. So one Friday, I called my mother from Massachusetts. My aunt Jean was my mother's oldest sister. And I said, Mom, I'm, I'll be home Friday night. I'll take you out to uh, dinner on Sunday. She said, Mike, would you mind if we visited Uncle Joe? He was at Seacrest in West Haven. I said, of course. She said, he doesn't recognize anybody. I said, Mom, are you kidding me? Come on now. Uncle Joe, you know, he's physically very strong and healthy. He doesn't recognize anybody. I said, yes, I'd like to go see him. So we get there, and my uncle didn't even recognize me, let alone his sister-in-law. There were glimpses and flashes of recognition. On, in his room, on a nightstand, was a picture of my aunt and him when they got married. So I said to my Uncle Joe, I said, Uncle Joe, Aunt Jean, wasn't she beautiful, your wife? And he said, I was never married. Didn't remember he was married. I said, but Uncle Joe, it's, we called her Auntie Jean. Auntie Jean, you don't 
don't remember, oh, I, don't, I was never married. It was then and there that I recognized this and how important this cause is. So with that, I'd like to read this proclamation. Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. 78,000 people, ladies and gentlemen, in Connecticut are living with Alzheimer's disease. And there are 178,000 caregivers in the state of Connecticut. Alzheimer's is a progressive degenerative disease of the brain and the most common form of dementia. Alzheimer's disease results in impaired memory, impaired thinking and behavior, and usually begins very gradually, causing a person to forget recent events and then have difficulty performing what were once very familiar tasks. The disease causes confusion. It causes personality and behavioral changes, and eventually the person loses the ability to care for themselves. Alzheimer's sadly is fatal and kills more people than breast and prostate cancer combined. The disease also takes a huge physical and a huge emotional and financial toll on the caregivers. The Alzheimer's Association asks all people to come together this June to support Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month and join the fight to end Alzheimer's. You can visit alz.org, that's alz.org, and learn more about Alzheimer's and other dementias. The warning signs you will see, the importance of early detection and diagnosis are on this website, as well as information on care, support, and research to find a new treatment and hopefully a cure. So tonight, we designate that June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month here in North Haven. So Denise, I'd like to ask you to step forward. Thank you for your wonderful efforts. And I'd like to present to you this cit you so much. citation. Denise, would you like to say a few words at the microphone? Pretty loud. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, for recognizing the importance of June is um, Alzheimer's Awareness and Brain Health Month. Um, the theme of this year is really to have the conversation. Um, it's not the easiest conversation, but it might be, um, Mom, I noticed that you know, um, you forgot a few things last week. Are you having any problems do, that you notice? Or mom going to the doctor and saying, hey doc, you know what? I'm having trouble remembering some, some cooking skills. And you know, I, I sat at the table and I didn't know how to, how to make my spaghetti. Um, this has been a stigma for years, and um, now it's time to talk about it. Uh, there are some, some research that shows healthy living can help prevent Alzheimer's, at least hold it off. Um, and there's a lot that we're learning about it, but this is the, the, the month where we should all be talking about this and, and helping each other out. And thank you so much for bringing this to the town's attention. And uh, I hope that you'll uh, join us at our walk in September, September 29th at Lighthouse Point Park. And I've brought a, a t-shirt for you and a beautiful community partner window cling for uh, the town hall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Denise. And thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to dispense with item number five um, because we have a very ambitious agenda this evening. And I'd like to immediately move into item number six. So ladies and gentlemen, item number six, I'm going to read a letter. And this letter is from Peter J. Criscola Jr who is recommending that one of our firehouses be named for one of 
the most beloved chiefs in the history of North Haven. This letter was read at the fire commission meeting back perhaps a couple of months ago. So I'm going to take the time to read this letter under correspondence and then open this up for discussion. Michael Frieda, First Selectman, Memorial Town Hall, 18 Church Street, Monoese Firehouse, subject. Dear Mr. Frieda, I respectfully suggest that the Board of Selectmen name the Monoese Firehouse in honor of North Haven's second professional fire chief, the late John E. O'Bear, Jr. Jack lived and raised his family in the Monoese section of town, and he was a volunteer with the Monoese Fire Company from 1954 through 1967, serving in all ranks up through and including assistant chief. He was North Haven's first class of professional firefighters, and he served his entire professional career as a North Haven firefighter. Jack served as deputy chief and deputy fire marshal from 1973 through 1983, when he succeeded John Rossadini to become the North Haven Fire Department's second chief. He was a graduate of the National Fire Academy Executive Fire Officer Program and was an adjunct professor of fire science at the University of New Haven. Jack earned honors and recognition that are too numerous to list here from every state and national fire protection organization culminating in 1984 with his well-deserved designation as Connecticut Firefighter of the Year and Public Fire Educator of the Year. In 2016, he was posthumously inducted into the Connecticut Professional Firefighters Hall of Fame. Jack O'Bear was a man of vision and a man of integrity who devoted his life to enhancing the safety of the citizens of the town of North Haven and the safety, dignity, professionalism of North Haven's professional and volunteer firefighters. I submit that it is a fitting honor to name the Monoese Firehouse in honor of the late Chief John E. O'Bear, Jr., and I respectfully ask the Board of Selectmen to do so. Very truly yours, Peter J. Criscolo, Jr., copy Captain Angel San Giorgio, Monoese Volunteer Fire Company, Mr. Pasquale Nuzzalillo, Chair, Board of the Fire Commission, and Chief Paul Janiszewski were copied on this. Sally? And Bill. Sally? Well, yes. Um, I was at the uh, Fire Commission meeting when uh, this issue uh, first came up, and I stated uh, during public comment at that time, I, of course, said I you know, would have to wait here how both of you felt about this. I mean, we don't name buildings uh, lightly and uh, have to be careful uh, um, and reflect carefully before we do so. But I stated at that time, and I'll state again, that I fully would support this. Um, I knew Jack O'Bear. He was the uh, fire chief during my tenure on the Board of Finance from 85 to 89, and uh, he gave excellent uh, um, workshops before the Board of Finance, and uh, he was a friend, and um, everything in this letter is very true about him. I remember him well. His, his uh, untimely death was shocking to all of us, and uh, um, so I believe that um, uh, given uh, his uh, service to our town, um, and I totally uh, agree that he was a man of great integrity and totally devoted to the uh, fire safety for the citizens of North Haven, that I think it would be fitting to, uh, to uh, grant this request and uh, honor the Monoese Firehouse in his name. William? Yeah, I, I, I did not, I did not uh, know him, but I mean, if you just, from based on what you said and what Pete said in the letter, I mean, you know, we, for somebody who started as a volunteer, became a professional firefighter, worked his way up through the ranks, 
you know, was, was recognized at a state and national level, you know, with over 30, um, 30 years of service to, to our community. You know, it does seem like if he were gonna select anybody, he would be a good candidate to do that, especially in his case, because he was also from, from Monoese and started in Monoese. So, I mean, I, 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 would, I would agree with, you know, with Sally and with Pete that you know, this seems to be, if you, if you were gonna name a building, after somebody, um, you know, with his be him, his being our second chief, um, this seems like maybe a very fitting choice. And he was in that first class. I think there were just seven original professional firefighters when uh, Chief Rosadini uh, was uh, convinced the town to go to a professional. Uh, it wasn't a 24-7 the way it is now. It was still predominantly a volunteer uh, force, but uh, um, uh, Jack O'Bear was one of the first of the professional firefighters and so that's another reason I think. Now this is the first time we've ever uh, done this. So yes. So I had to check uh, with the uh, with the procedures and it is a board of selectmen decision. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time a building was named was around 2007 or 8 Chief John Rosadini with the main firehouse mm -hmm. and um, so it's our decision here tonight. Um, do you have any other comments Bill or Sally on this? You know, them being the second chief, it seems like a, maybe, a, you know, and his 30 years of service, it seems like a natural um, uh, continuation of maybe that decision that was previously made in 2007, you know, based on his service as well. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, we're not setting a precedent that every every chief of every is always going to get a building named after them. That's, that's why I said we have to take this responsibility very seriously. But if you look at the whole picture, um, um, and again, starting from the beginning of the fire department with him being on the ground floor of our professional fire department, I think that it is uh, very fitting to do so. Okay. We're gonna so, I, think you can, I think you can definitely say, you know, whatever the criteria may be, he fits that criteria. Yes, yes. I think if you look at me, there's probably, I have no criteria that they should name any building after. <laughs> no. So I, I'm going to pass on putting my name up for any. <laughs> All right. So we, we need a motion to accept. I, I will make that motion that we uh, grant this um, suggestion that the Monoese Firehouse be named uh, in honor of uh, the late John E. Obear Jr. No, second that motion. I'll make a second. Okay, is there, there's a motion and there's a second. Is there any other discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. And what we'll do is work out the details of the actual ceremony at the firehouse. Yeah, we'll have to contact the O'Bear yes. family and all mm -hmm. that. I see Mr. Lieutenant David O'Bear here. Dave, would you like to say a few words? I guess so. Dave O'Bear, Belvedere Road. Uh, I just want to thank the selectmen and the board for approving this. Uh, it's been a long time. He put in a lot of years, uh, died too young, and I'm very grateful for your, your support. David, your mother, Ellen, still lives on she Belvedere? She still lives on Belvedere Road also, yes. My brother lives here, my sister lives here. One's in Florida. We don't count him. <laughs> okay. I really want to, I want to thank you. All right, so we'll be back in touch with the family, David, on uh, the next steps and moving forward, okay? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, David. Okay. Item number seven, Sally asked to have this item put on the yeah, agenda. Yeah, I, I just Sorry. wanted to have a, a brief uh, post-referendum discussion of the 1920 fiscal year budget. Um, as, as you know, I had some concerns with the budget, with the increase in spending, I had suggested um, some cuts to the Board of Finance. I was a little disappointed they didn't take me up on any of the suggestions. Uh, however, the, the, you know, the referendum took place and the voters uh, supported the budget. So of course, I, I believe in that process fully. This is our budget and I support that. Uh, um, but I just had a couple of comments about one article that appeared the, the, the day after the referendum, um, and I just wanted to ask you a couple of things about, about uh, actually it was two different articles. 
Um, uh, you know, and, and again, uh, you know, I fully support the democratic process and I accept that this is our budget. I want to make that perfectly clear. Um, and uh, we will go forward with the budget that the uh, voters approved. But I don't like when there's misleading stuff in the paper. Um, and uh, so I, uh, uh, there was one thing that appeared in the register on uh, Wednesday, May 22nd, an article written by uh, reporter Claire Dignan, and I did contact her, and she did put a uh, correction in the paper the following day. But there was a part of the article that said, you know, this, this budget that was approved uh, had an increase in spending of uh, just under $4.9 million. That was the increase in spending. And it said that the proposed budget is, and I'm reading from the article, the proposed budget is a $4.9 million increase over last fiscal year, $2.8 million of which is due to an increased debt service payment. Uh, because the town will be paying back uh, bonding on the middle school and police station. That's not accurate. Um, that figure was used during the budgetary process. Um, it's only one million. Uh, the rest of the increase was, um, as the first selectman slides at the public hearing pointed out, the rest of the increase was 1.5 million to the Board of Ed, 1.5 million to the town. Uh, the health insurance was 400 thousand and capital uh, 377 the increase in the debt was only 1 million which is only 21 percent of the increase so I just wanted to point out that correction they did r put a correction in the following paper but who looks at corrections and I just it just drives me crazy when there's misleading information um, in the paper about uh, something as important as our as our budget and then I just had one question uh, for you, Michael, in the Citizen of um, March 20, March, excuse me, May 24th, an article written by Bailey Wright. Um, it talks about um, the capital portion of the budget, which I have here, and it is uh, the capital expense was $936,000. Um, which in this article is reporting an increase of 67 percent or 377,000 from the previous year, which Mr. Frieda said is due to the schedule of debt service accrued from recent capital improvements like the middle school road paving and the police station. That, that's not accurate. Yeah, the, well, the, ca well yeah. the, the debt service is different from the capital. Right. Um, I, well, I just wanted, but again, that would, uh, you know, that, the, the main increase in the capital was because of the um, $300,000 ladder truck, yeah, which I supported. Right. But that was just another right. blatant error that, you know, I, you know, there's other errors that are minor that I'm not going to take the time to correct. But when I see major errors um, in, in, the, in the paper that might mislead the citizens, I feel an obligation to just so set you the have to understand straight. one thing yeah well, a lot of times when interviews come in they're on cell phones yeah and I can never expect a reporter who they all do a great job mm -hmm. to understand the intricacies intricacies and details like I do right when you talk about issues in government they're very difficult sometimes to comprehend particularly on the financial side right. so I always give the reporters a pass because we're on cell phones maybe breaking up and there's very elaborate and intricate details that I have to try to make and I have to try to present it in more layman's terms. So I don't view that as a negative on the reporters. They do a great job. It's just a matter of finding what the right balance is in terms of ensuring that what was being said is reported and there's no misinterpretations on the complicated, detailed issues. Right. Well, I'm not blaming the reporters. I'm just saying that that the increase in the capital expense had, which was, was for the a, fire truck, was, we, we, which right. had nothing to do with the debt. That's right. all I wanted to m make certain. There and was two right. major errors about the debt service in, in, in the paper. I'm not blaming anyone. You know, errors happen. Some are small and minor and not worth noting. Others, uh, you know, are are more significant. And I felt those two were significant. And that's why I asked for a okay. post-referendum discussion, and uh, I thank okay. you for your time. Okay. We have a lot so, more to do, so, so let's move on. And, that, and that, yeah. I think that's perfectly good too that you, you know, it, 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 all of us have been on the board, been on the board of finance, so mm -hmm. you know it's hard enough even looking at the numbers sometimes to, to try to understand. And I know we've asked for you know over the years, you know, when we were on the board of finance and 
um, you know, ask for maybe different ways to categorize things so we could better understand it. But you know, I, I think when you're, you know, when you're reporting on it or even looking at the paper, it's sometimes hard to do that. I think I think you mentioned it at the board of finance meeting. Too. Yes, I, I I did, and so it's okay um, that you mentioned it tonight. But it, yes, you know, I think it's important that that you get you get the correct information out there. So well, that's say, what I'm. What you're trying to do. I appreciate you thinking that that's important, Bill, because that's why I uh, I brought it up. I right. wanted people to understand that that um, of the 4.9 million, um, only 1 million of that figure was from the increase in the debt service. Uh, that was an issue that kept popping up throughout the budgetary process. And so when I saw it again incorrectly in, in the register article, I was like, oh boy, here we go. And so I just felt uh, that I wanted to okay. correct it. And I, I uh, appreciate those comments, Bill. Thank you. All right, so we'll move now to item yes. number eight. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the approval of the dates of the 2020 Board of Selectmen meetings. The meetings will be held here, first Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. And if you can take a look at these dates, Sally and Bill, you know, we always have flexibility if something comes up after we vote on these dates to make adjustments, but these represent those first Thursdays in every month. Assuming we're all here, that's fine with me. I'll, I'll move the approval. Uh, we have to vote on this, right? No? Yes. I'll move for the approval of the dates for the 2020 Board of Selectmen meetings as listed in item eight of the agenda. I'll, uh, I'll second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Uh, I'll say it once again in the discussion, if during the course of the year something comes up for either of you uh, and we have to change to the following Thursday, we will accommodate that. Right. All right, so uh, motion second and call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item number nine. So um, for m now the balance of this agenda, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have Sally and Bill kind of read and rotate back and forth. So, Sal, if you'd like to start on item nine. Sure. This is board and commission appointments and resignations. The first one is uh, the reappointment of Reverend Scott Murrow, 34 Bassett Road, to the Cemetery Commission for a two-year term to expire June 30th, 2021. So I will move that reappointment. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. And in discussion, I'd like to thank Reverend Morrow. He has been a true collaborative partner with this government, does a wonderful job, as do all the clergy, and he's a very valued member of our cemetery commission. So we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next. Um, also for the uh, cemetery commission, reappointment of Carl Veith, um, Republican 30 Allendale Drive, uh, to the cemetery commission for a two-year term to expire June 30th, 2021. I'll second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, Carl, thank you for your service and thank you for your expertise in terms of uh, field operations management, for lack of a better way to describe that. So we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next, I'll move for the reappointment of Todd Ritchie, or Ricky, 27 Fallon Drive, to the Cemetery Commission for a two year term to expire June 30th, 2021. All second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Todd, thank you for your service on this commission and thank you for your service as a North Haven volunteer firefighter. So we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, the uh, reappointment of Anthony Resignio, um, 7 Beach Lane, North Haven, Connecticut, uh, as North Haven's representative of the South Central Connecticut Regional Water District's Representative Policy Board, uh, RPB, for a three-year term to expire June 30th. 2022. I'll second that reappointment. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Resigno has been on this board for decades and uh, has done a great job for us as a liaison. So we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, we have, uh, I will move uh, that we accept the resignation of Kevin Smith, 191 C10 Pool Road from the Housing Authority Board term to expire December 31st, 2019. I'll second that uh, resignation. All right, so we have a motion and a second. And under discussion, I would just like to read Mr. Smith's resignation letter. 
because I think in paragraph three, he should be acknowledged for this. Michael J. Frieda, first selectman, chief elect elected official, 18 Church Street. Mike, please accept this letter as formal notification that I am resigning from my position as commissioner with the North Haven Housing Authority. My last day will be May 31st, which has come and passed. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have been a commissioner on the North Haven Housing Authority. During my last few days, I'll do everything possible to wrap up my duties. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do to aid during the transition. And Mr. Smith, Kevin, you should be commended for that. Kevin was our tenant commissioner on this board. I wish the North Haven Housing Authority and Wallingford Housing Authority continued success, and I hope to stay in touch in the future. Sincerely, Kevin. Kevin, thank you for your years of service on this commission. Okay. Bond reviews, number 10. We have to have a vote. Oh, we have to do a vote, yes. Okay, yeah, so motion, there was a second, there was discussion, so we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 10, bond releases. Okay, I'll, I'll do the first one. It is item number 117-04, 124 Mansfield Road, the Slate School. Release the entire bond balance in the amount of $17,000 with the recommendation of the Inlet Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. I uh, reviewed the paperwork regarding uh, this bond release in our, our packet and I would move, uh, make a motion for uh, the release as read. Okay. All second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, second bond release is also um, is, is P117-16, also for 124 Mansfield Road Slate School to release the entire bond balance in the amount of $50,000 with the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Committee. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Finally, for bond releases, we have P13-04 regarding 500 Middletown Avenue, Lexington Gardens, release the entire bond balance in the amount of $40,000. So I would move the release as read. Um, I'll uh, second that. All right, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Bill, I'm gonna ask you to read 11 and 12 because they connect. And then, Sally, I'll have you do 13, 14, all the way through, okay? okay. All right. I'm ready. So, so William? 13, 14 are long ones. That's uh, all right. Item number 11 on the agenda is to consider and vote upon whether to authorize town council and staff to negotiate the final terms of and town council to execute, execute a stipulation for judgment in the pending enforcement action of Laura Mag, uh, Magar, Magar C at all versus Robert P. Newbig at all, which stipulation shall include but not be limited to terms which allow for the release of two cash bonds being held against the subject property at 4, 480 Valley Service Road, which said bond money to be held by the town or held in escrow by one or both of the parties' council to be dispersed solely for payment of expenses or cost associated with the proper removal and disposal of all solid waste from the property in compliance with all applicable statutes and regulations. So before we get to the resolution, I'd like to acknowledge that Laura Magarasi and Lynn Sadowski are here. Both of these wonderful employees have spent so much time on this issue down through the years. Essentially what this represents is for years there, were illegal, there was illegal dumping on Valley Service Road at this site, 480. And the illegal dumping caused a great deal of stress on the town because once we are, are acknowledging or once we have been acknowledged that there ha is a problem, we have to act. Years ago, there was a problem at Big Y where the, res where the consumers in the store were getting sick because the air conditioner was blowing some very pungent odors into the store. And we worked with Big Y to solve that problem. So what this 
judgment is saying to us as the Board of Selectmen is that there's bond money there that we'd like to have appropriated for us to facilitate the cleanup of the project that needs to be done from a public safety standpoint. And Laura and Lynn have been the point person on this, and Alan Fredrickson's been involved for years. This is going on for years. And at this point, this represents, in my view, and I'm, I'm, I'm very well immersed in the details on this, based on Laura and Lynn and Alan, this represents our best solution. So we should go with the resolution to read. He was assigned number 12. Yes. <laughs> I got my hands full you with the next your, page. Oh. The next couple of pages. I know. <laughs> uh, based on Mike's comments, um, we've now moved on to resolved. Oh. To authorize Town Council Jennifer Coppola and Zoning and Wetlands yeah. Enforcement Officer Laura Magarasi, Land Use Administrator Alan, um, Alan Fredrickson, and Town Engineer Andrew Bellacqua to negotiate the final terms of a stipulation for judgment in the pending action of Laura Magarasi, uh, Inland Wetlands Commission of the Town of North Haven, and Town of North Haven versus Robert P. Newbig and New Corp and Newco Corp, which stipulation shall include but not be limited to terms which allow for the release of the cash bond in the amount of $15,000 currently being held for wetlands application number I-10-05 and for the release of the cash bond in the amount of $8,000 currently being held for zoning application number P-11-05S with said bond money to be held by the town or held in escrow by one or both of the parties council to be, to be dispersed solely for payment of expenses or costs associated with the proper removal and disposal of all solid waste from the property in compliance with all applicable statutes and regulations. That's all one sentence, I believe. All right. <coughs> okay. So um, procedurally, let's ask for a motion and a second, and then we'll engage in a discussion, okay? Well, um, or would you like uh, to discuss first? Well, we could move it first. That's okay. fine. I'll move the resolution as uh, read by the second selectman. Okay. A second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Now we'll entertain discussion. Yes. Um, I, I spoke at length with uh, town council about this uh, today. And um, based on those discussions, I feel this is the appropriate way to go. I mean, this is uh, litigation that's been going on for some time. Uh, stipulated judgment means it's not going to trial. They're, the parties are stipulating or agreeing to terms of a judgment. Uh, I am supportive of it primarily because uh, we are releasing these bonds, but the money is going to be held, very importantly, in escrow by either the town or by the party's council with uh, the um, uh, you know, the stipulation that it be dispersed solely for the payment of uh, the removal of, of the problem. And I mean, that's really the purpose here. The, 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 our two town employees involved are looking at me nodding in agreement. If, if they want to come to the microphone, they can comment as well. But that, that's why I'm supportive of it, that that's where the money's going and that's what the, where the money's going to be used for. Because this is money that was based, these were cash bonds that were put up for other purposes, I would assume, and uh, in part of the uh, deal, if you will, is that we will release with that uh, understanding. So based on that, uh, I think uh, 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 Laura and, and um, Lynn Sadowski, our Director of Public Works and Town Council have put in tremendous hours and have done a magnificent job in this. And uh, at first, you know, I was like, okay, what's this about? Um, but having heard the story and understanding the complexities and, and really the goal that's in the best interest of the town is to get rid of the garbage, this, I would fully support this. So those are my comments on this. Because for, for those watching on TV, this doesn't utilize the taxpayers' dollars to clean up what needs to be cleaned up. 
Good point. This is the utilization of monies that the property owner had put up as cash bonds that we will be putting in escrow for the sole purpose of cleaning up the site, and that is the key. That's why it's okay by me. Did, did, Lynn, did you want to comment, or have no, we said yes. enough? You, you both you stated it well, very well. Okay. It Thank you. Okay. My, my understanding um, is, is that these funds will be sufficient to, to do the cleanup. It will be. We don't have that. Hopeful. <laughs> so, and at least I think as, I think as um, both Mike and uh, Sally said, I think it's, um, I, I actually had, um, had to do a little research on this because it goes back so many years, as Mike, I think, uh, indicated earlier. And it seems like this is finally a way to get this resolved because it's been a, open issue for too long if if it's not enough well that is we're gonna have to cross that bridge yes when we right. get to it uh, but um, I it would make a significant improvement I, think, right, I would rather know, that that situation yeah exactly and, I, and again it, at least it's a start and uh, we know that the money will be used for those purposes I'm I'm sure that our uh, our, our colleagues on the uh, Oh, the, what what is it the the water well, the the, well, the wetlands well. people are very concerned because uh, Quinnipiac is nearby, correct? Yes, so I'm sure that they will be very happy about this yes, to yes. at least get something started on something that's kind of been a problem <coughs> for a long time. All right, okay. so we have a motion and a second. Yes. So we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So Sally, we'll turn it over to you on item 13. Okay, here we go. To consider and vote upon a resolution with respect to the authorization, issuance, and sale of not exceeding $12,500,000 Town of North Haven general obligation refunding bonds. So I'm going now to yes. number 14. Right. I'm just have a little water, please. Excuse me. Thank you, thank you. Item 14, resolved, A, that the town issue its refunding bonds, the refunding bonds, in an amount not to exceed $12,500,000, the proceeds of which are hereby appropriated to fund one or more escrows to be applied together with the investment earnings thereon to the payment in whole or in part as determined by the first selectman and the treasurer of the town of the outstanding principal of an interest and any all and any call premium on all or a portion of any issue of the town's general obligation bonds, including but not limited to the town's 5,460,000 general obligation refunding bonds, issue of 2010, $6,460,000 general obligation refunding bonds, issue of 2012, and 9185000 thousand general on obligation obligation bonds issue of 2014 the refunded bonds including the payment of interest accrued on the refunded bonds to the date of payment and to the costs of issuance of the refunding bonds including legal fees consultant fees trustee or escrow agent fees underwriting fees net interest and other financing costs and other costs related to the payment of the refunding bonds the refunding bonds shall be issued pursuant to Section 7-370C of the Connecticut General Statutes, provision of 1958, as amended, and any other enabling acts. The refunding bonds shall be general obligations of the town, secured by the irrevocable pledge of the full faith and credit of the town. The first selectman and the treasurer of the town shall sign the refunding bonds by their manual or facsimile signatures. The law firm of Day Pitney LLP is designated as bond counsel to approve the legality of the refunding bonds. The first selectman and the treasurer are authorized to determine the amount, date, interest rates, maturities, redemption provisions, form, and other details of the refunding bonds to designate one or more banks or, or trust companies to be certifying bank, registrar, transfer agent, and paying agent for the refunding bonds to provide for the keeping of a record of the refunding bonds, to sell the refunding bonds at public or private sale, to deliver the refunding bonds, and to perform all other acts which are necessary or appropriate to issue the refunding bonds. 
you could tell a lawyer wrote this. B, that the town hereby declares its official intent under federal income tax regulation section 1.150-2 that costs of the refunding may be paid from temporary advances of available funds and, accept that, and that, except to the extent reimbursed from grant monies, the town reasonably expects to reimburse any such advances from the proceeds of borrowings in an aggregate principal amount not in excess of the amount of borrowing authorized above for the refunding. The first selectmen and the treasurer are authorized to amend such declaration of official intent as they deem necessary or advisable and to bind the town pursuant to such representations and covenants as they deem necessary or advisable in order to maintain the continued exemption from federal income taxation or interest on the bonds authorized by this resolution if issued on a tax exempt basis including covenants to pay rebates of investment earnings to the United States in future years. C, that the first selectman and the treasurer are authorized to make representations and enter into written agreements for the benefit of holders of the bonds to provide secondary market disclosure information, which agreements may include such terms as they deem advisable or appropriate in order to comply with applicable laws or rules pertaining to the sale or purchase of such bonds. D, that the first selectman and the treasurer are authorized to take all other action which is necessary or desirable to enable the town to effectuate the refunding of the refunded bonds and to issue the refunding bonds for such purposes, including but not limited to the entrance into agreements on behalf of the town with underwriters, trustees, escrow agents, and others to facilitate the issuance of the refunding bonds, the escrow of the proceeds thereof, and investment earnings thereon, and the payment of the refunding bonds. E, that the above authorization to issue refunding bonds shall lapse on June 30th, 2020. Val. Sally, could you just clarify the amount because I think you misspoke and I Where? just want to make sure that it's correct in the re reading of the resolution, 12 million. 12 million 500,000? Yeah, you forgot to say 1,000. So oh, excuse just me. I want to make sure that's okay. um, clarified. Right, that the town issue its refunding bonds in an amount not to exceed Twelve million five hundred thousand dollars. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, so we um, have to read all of that into the record. It's very complicated legal language, and I'm going to share with you what this means. What this means is, from the business and financial side of this government, Ed and I spent a lot of time on the business and financial side, and what we're doing here is there's twenty-one million. $105,000 worth of bonds that potentially could have been refundable. That we, Ed and I, have been very carefully calculating and monitoring the interest rates that are being presented across the country. As an example, the two-year Treasury note now is at 1.87%. So as interest rates drop, Ed and I look at where we have opportunities for refundable bonds. And out of the $21,105,000, $12,500,000 are refundable at a lower interest rate. So what this does, and this is the most important part, this saves the town $444,000 over a 10-year period, roughly $44,000 a year in debt service payments. This is an example of good financial management right here. So that's why I think this is important. So Basically, we are refinancing some of our yes our debt. Yes, that's what this is. Um, uh, you know, people are familiar out there with refinancing their own mortgages, and some you know, um, uh, you know, I've, I've been practicing real estate law for many years. People aren't refinancing as much as they used to, but I assume it's a similar evaluation you're looking at a better interest rate to yeah. save money over the long term so uh, that was my uh, first question was what how much savings would be realized because obviously there's costs incurred in doing this just as there's costs when you refinance your mortgage you're always right. going to look at what those costs are versus the benefit of the refinance over right. over you know over over time because that's what this is all about is time right exactly now right. are we starting over? At 17 years, because you mentioned 10 years, you, you said, aren't, aren't the well? The, no, it's, it'll be over 10 years. The savings will be 444,000 over 10 years. Okay. okay, okay, but you could understand why I would be interested 
and knowing the savings. I mean, because yeah. it, it's so. Well, that's why I mentioned it. So. Oh yes. Okay. So. Now this was initiate. Was this initially um, uh, suggested by bond bond council or or from the finance director? Because uh, I don't think we've had refunding bonds at least not in my tenure this is my sixth year i've been involved with refinancing both companies and bonds and municipal government so we did this in year two my second year in office wow. where i looked at all the bonds and we saved at that time three hundred eighty seven thousand dollars okay that period so this is the second time we're doing this because we have the opportunity okay. to well do you it. didn't have the pleasure of me sitting next to you that first that time was a <laughs> steep those were good those were good days weren't they uh, yeah. well, they're always good days yeah so. so no i this is the first time that i've seen this particular tool utilized uh, in order to effectuate these um uh, savings so that's why I just asked. So I, I uh, along with Ed, were the driving forces on this because we were always looking at the debt, the bonds, what's being paid off, uh, knowing what we have coming with the public uh, voting in such a large fashion on the middle school and the police station. So I had hoped this would be more, but this is what it is, 444000 over the 10-year period. The $21 million is only partially callable? Well, we already paid. We already paid the difference between... 12.5 million in the 21. Okay, so and yes. that, that's why I want. I, that, yes. So you're actually calling all three of those bonds. That's right. Completely. I wasn't sure whether, from what you said earlier, whether uh, they were uh, fully callable or only partial. So that's actually a good point. So we've actually, the 21, a little bit over 21 million, we've actually paid it down to 12 and a half. That's right. And we're refunding three bonds completely from uh, what, 2010, um, 2012, and 2014. So that shows, I think, not only did you know, we pay down principal, but now we're refinancing the remaining principal at a lower rate. At a lower rate. Right. So. Right. This so. must be the, the firehouse renovations. That's a there's combination. A, there's a lot of stuff that. in here. There's okay. A, it's a mixture. So. Okay. But it's, it's a good thing to do. It's always good in government to do this. So we'll, let's see. You got through D, so you did a good job in getting us through I think e. I did E. And we're through E, so now we're at the point of uh, that you read the resolution. We have to uh, make a motion to accept it. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll make, make the motion to thank you. accept the resolution. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I'll Hearing second. I, I second didn't second it yet. Okay. okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, William, you're up next. My notes. Fifteen. Sorry. Um, next item is to consider and vote upon a call for a public hearing concerning programs submitted for approval under the Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act. Resolved that a public hearing to be held on Monday, June 17, 2019 at 6.15 p.m. in the conference room number one, the second floor of the North Haven Memorial Town Hall, 18 Church Street, North Haven, Connecticut concerning programs to be submitted for approval under the Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act. The town has received the following two applications, which are both on file in the office of Michael J. Frieda for Selectman Memorial Town Hall, 18 Church Street, North Haven, Connecticut. Uh, a, a, continuing energy conservation improvements for Moriarty Hall submitted by Landcraft Fife and Drum Corps, and B, Financial Literacy and Workforce Readiness for Connecticut Youth Submitted by Junior Achievement of Southwest New England, Inc. All right, this is an annual thing we do, ladies and gentlemen, for those watching on TV. To put this into, into more basic terms, what this is is that it's an act that allows businesses to receive tax credits for making donations to, to nonprofits and uh, 5013Cs. That's what this is, and we have two applicants this year. I'll move the resolution is read. Okay. I'll so, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. My Next turn? Up. My Your turn. turn. Yes. To consider, number 17, to consider and act upon a resolution recommending a $2 million appropriation and bond authorization for the milling and paving of town roadways consisting of milling and removal of waste materials, paving and materials, installation of manholes and drainage risers, traffic 
protection, including signage and police and flag personnel. Do you want me to do the re yes. resolution as yeah. well? Yes. And number 18, um, why, don't, why don't we have uh, Bill read that, because I have some concerns about this. Number 18. Go ahead to read 18, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, resolved that the Board of Selectmen recommends that the Town of North Haven appropriate $2 million for the milling and paving of town roadways. The project shall consist of milling and removal of waste materials, paving and, paving and materials, installation of manholes and drainage risers, traffic protection, including signage and police and flag personnel, the appropriation may be spent for design, demolition, and construction costs, equipment, furnishings, materials, site improvements, survey costs, architects' fees, engineering fees, other consultants' fees, legal fees, net temporary interest and other financing costs, and other expenses related to the project, and that the town issue bonds or notes and temporary notes an amount not to exceed $2 million to finance the appropriation. Okay, your concerns? I, I had a couple of questions. You might recall I, um, we had a discussion about milling and paving that um, came out of a, um, a matter that I brought um, before the board at the request of a citizen. Um, his name uh, was uh, Steve Smith, yeah. retired police officer. He come to my office uh, concerned about Marlin Drive in Monoese. It's an area where he walks a lot, and it had been repaved. And within a month, he noticed and counted 45 curb to curb cracks in the road. So I had brought that up, and I think the following month, um, Town Engineer Bodwell came to a meeting and was explaining that the, the reason for those cracks is because of how we do the milling and paving. Um, we don't go down to the stone. It, 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 to, uh, it would be too expensive to go that route. And so what's happening is um, it, we're just paving over existing cracks. And that's how, how Mr. Bodwell explained it, if you recall. And he said that that's why the cracks are, are re-emerging. Re um, and uh, he said that uh, given that technique, the, the roads could be expected to last 10 years, whereas the old way they did it, they lasted 25. And so I said at that time, this was about six or seven months ago, that it begged the question, um, you know, should we do the more expensive type of milling and paving uh, to get down um, under, you know, and get rid of those cracks and maybe have the road last 20, 25 years rather than the 10 that Mr. Bodwell referenced. And you had said at that time, well, we could have that discussion the next time a milling and paving bonding issue came before us. Well, here we are. So I, that's why I, yeah, I'm a little disappointed. I'm, I'm sure Lynn Sadowski didn't expect me to be you know, bringing up this issue, but she had left the room after we finished the new big discussion, so she's not here um, to ask questions or her opinions on this. But um, you know, we, we did have that discussion, and we said, or I should say, you said that we would maybe uh, look at that issue down the line, but that it wouldn't affect the, bo the, the bonding that we had in place back at that time. That we were going to continue with um, the the milling and paving technique that we've been utilizing. So I, I just wondered, had you given any more thought about um, changing the technique um, and maybe? doing it differently so the is it better to spend a little bit more money and have the road last more than twice as long I, I don't know well all we're doing tonight is calling the town to bring this to the town meeting so right we, right. Uh, we certainly can discuss that at the town meeting yes and that's what I'm I but uh, and of, of course I will always as you know vote in favor of calling a town meeting but this is for the Board of Selectmen to recommend so I am going to abstain on the recommendation because I want to hear what the folks have okay. to say at the town meeting. So that's why I wanted to bring up this issue that uh, uh, retired Officer Smith had brought up six right. or seven months ago and the discussions you and I had and my concerns about how we're doing milling and paving. And, and maybe the, the new town engineer could come to that meeting and give his opinions on, 
on, on uh, the, you know, the pros and cons and balancing act here involved in, in spending this $2 million in the, best, in the best way possible. So as far as, you know, the recommendation, it says the Board of Selectmen recommends that we appropriate. I'm going to abstain until I hear that discussion at the town meeting, and I want to explain why I'm abstaining. So Thank you. Um, you mentioned Steve, and you, you yeah. bring this up. You said Marlin and Mount right? Marlin. Marlin. Not Marlin. Oh, not Marlin. What, what? No, Marlin's out that way. Uh, Marion. Marion. Excuse me. Marion. But not Marlin. Okay. No, Marlin right. is off of uh, Ridge. Marion is down um, at Mount Thank you. Okay. All right. Began with an M. You know, right. well, uh, there's a lot of streets. Right. Well, we but also, you, re you remember the discussion, oh, Michael. Yeah, okay, absolutely. thank you. Well, we, what we have with this, and it's not just us, it's every city in town, that a lot of the life cycle of roads that are being paved are, are tied into the underground waterways that we, we have in certain parts of town. Oakwood Drive is a good example. Um, there, were, there, were, there were certain parts of the town that were built at the time that are on top of under, underground waterways, which over the course of time contributes to impugning the integrity of roads, uh, including ones that are recently paved. So we also have to recognize that where that's the case, even scraping down is not gonna solve that problem. Well, um, uh, town engineer Bodwell was stressing the fact that we were just repaving over existing cracks more than he talked about the water. This is why I'm, I'm willing to hear about this discussion. Look, I know that, that yeah. milling and paving is very popular with the citizens in town. People are happy when, they're, when their roads are improved, and I understand that. I'm not saying I'm um, against this. I'm just saying I want to hear at the town meeting a more further discussion and some opinions from some experts. Um, you know that okay. that, right. that 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 address the issue. That's all. all right. uh, you know, two million dollars is, is two million dollars. I like to make sure it's being spent uh, properly, and and um, uh, you know, and I think that uh, Citizen uh, Smith made a, made a good point, and Mr. Bodwell made his points, and so we could talk about it more at the uh, town meeting. Okay. Up then, I'm willing to do that. So yeah. that's fine. Yeah. All Thank right. you. Maybe, so you could arrange for him to yeah. be at this town meeting. We'll make a note of that. Okay. Thank you. Very That's great. all. And, okay. you know, I may very well change my mind to a yes at that point. But at Fair this enough. point, I'm going to abstain. All right. Okay. So I'll make the motion then to accept the resolution, Bill. I'll second. All right. So we have a motion and a second, one abstention. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Abstain. Thank you. Just a, for a point of clarification, you have the public hearing at 6.15 for the um, Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act. Mm. Uh, and then we have the town meeting right afterwards you know, regarding regarding this matter, because yeah. we're gonna get into the next one. That yeah. public hearing takes like five minutes. Yeah, so yeah, not even. That, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't require a vote though, or no? I don't remember. What? The, the public hearing on that. We voted on that. Mm. Do we vote on that? Yeah. To, to have the public hearing? Yeah. yeah. We, voted. we voted on having the public hearing, but at the public hearing, we don't have to vote? No. We just have no a public vote. hearing. We, all we do basically is announce the two programs right. okay. that were, that were so that's, sent to the So that's not subject to a vote like the, no, it's not I couldn't remember. I just wanted to understand, you know, because we do that yeah. first at 6.15 yeah. and then. This is all required by the state. We're, we're kind of just the conduit to get these programs from these entities to the state for their approval and review. And they just ask that the town goes through these procedures to do it. So it's really not a special town meeting there, it's just a public hearing it's just a, a to public satisfy the town, the town right, requirement. Right, we'll be going to the town meeting at 6.30. Right. Oh, okay, which is why we get to the call of the town Why we get to the next resolution. Yes. So. I'm sorry, so I just That's wanted okay. to understand. I think it's a procedural, the, exactly. the state requires a public hearing on the, exactly. now this is for our, our app, the, the applications for the, these programs. Yes. Yeah. It's just, and then what I do is I just send them off to the state with all of the paperwork and the documentation that shows we had a public hearing and the minutes of the meeting and it all goes off in a package and then we're done with that. So it doesn't so people really should come any. to the special town meeting between like 6, 6, 15 so they can hear both right. parts of the right. agenda, the all, all the parts of the no agenda. Money. We have no responsibility financially at all for these programs. So for the, you know, yeah, the public assistance. Mostly like a procedure. I think we do this every year. We do. Yeah. We've been doing it for okay. as long as I've been here before that. 
All right, so then we're at we're number 20 now, right? Well, ni 19. 19. 19, okay. 19, to consider and vote upon the following resolution, setting the time of place for and items to be considered and voted on at a special town meeting. Number 20, resolved that a special town meeting to be held on Monday, June 17th, 2019, in the second floor conference room number one of the North Haven Town Hall, 18 Church Street in North Haven, Connecticut at 6.30 p.m. for the following purposes. One, to ratify and approve the reappointment of Anthony P. Resigno as the North Haven representative to the representative policy board of the South Central Connecticut Water District. Two, to consider the approval of requested programs in accordance with the Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act, a public hearing on these programs will be held at 6.15 p.m. on Monday, June 17th, 2019, in conference room number one of the North Haven Memorial Town Hall, 18 Church Street, North Haven, Connecticut, immediately preceding the special town meeting. And three, to consider and act upon a resolution in accordance with the recommendation of the Board of Finance concerning a two million dollar appropriation and bond authorization for the milling and paving of town roadways and that the notice of the special town meeting presented at this meeting be approved and signed okay so i'll move that resolution as read we'll second all right motion second any other discussion hearing none all those in favor aye aye all right item 21. the um item 20 was property tax refunds which was actually a fairly small list compared to other other uh, other meetings. I'll motion that uh, I'll make a motion to uh, to approve those property tax refunds. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 22. Our next meeting of the board of selectmen is Thursday, July 11th. The previous Thursday is July 4th. That would have been the first Thursday, so July 11th. And Sally just passed me a note before we adjourn school. Just, we'll soon. I thought okay. we should okay. say something about that. All right, okay. Some of the bicycle riding has been atrocious. All right. If you want. So, um, so I'll just um, review this. Sally just pointed this out. Uh, before we adjourn school, we'll be out soon. Perhaps a statement from me encouraging the kids to have a safe summer. And that's, I think, a noble gesture for us to make. So, um, with what we see in today's society, ladies and gentlemen, um, we really stress public safety here. We support public safety very much, and we encourage everyone to please watch, look, and listen. Whether you're in a car, check your speedometer. Sometimes we don't realize the rate of speed we're traveling. We have a lot of issues in town with speeding. Our police department has ramped up the enforcements. Our enforcements in terms of stoppages are up dramatically with trying to control speeding, phones, texting. And for our young boys and girls and our adolescents, please be safe this summer. Um, and for those that are riding bikes, and I'm happy to see this because I do see it all the time, right. helmets are very, very important. So thank you. Yeah, I've seen some pretty uh, unsafe maneuvers on bikes lately with the kids and so that's why I wanted I thought it would mean more coming from you you know you kids you've got to <laughs> you can't be riding like four in a row in the middle of the road I, I see some really outrageous bicycle riding and I just want to encourage kids I know school's going to be out soon and you're going to be out there having a great time with your friends so please be safe especially on your bikes on the roads that's Very really good. what I wanted we totally to say agree. thank you all right all right, so we're at the point, item number 23, public comment. Mary White. Nice pictures of Jimmy, Mary, congratulations. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you very much. Mary White, Summer Lane. So, continuing on the safety of children, I have a request. I would like to ask residents and parents to attend the July 1st planning and zoning meeting. It will be at seven o'clock at the library commuting community meeting room. And I'd like them to attend and speak in favor of the Boys and Girls Club coming to North Haven on the bottom floor of the Hope Christian Church at 211 Montuise Avenue. There is a huge need in North Haven, especially with middle school children 
and also elementary. They offer 20 programs, leadership, mathematics, STEM, um, let's see, that's I think science, technology, engineering, mathematics, both school, before school program, after school program, summer camps. The supervision is one adult per eight students. It's less than a dollar a day. It's $150 a year. The time for the morning program is 7.30 to 9 o'clock, and the time for the after school program is 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And the Board of Education superintendent, they're working on having buses provide transportation from the schools to the Boys and Girls Club. So I did speak in favor of the Boys and Girls Club, but I'm only one resident. So the Planning and Zoning Commission needs to hear from other residents, especially parents of middle school children. They did say that there is such a need in North Haven that when they're up and running, should they get approval, there could be as many as 100 students there. So I'm just asking people to please um, mark it on the calendar and please come in support of the Boys and Girls Club. So on a lighter note, the uh, traffic light at the intersection of Sackett Point and Universal is on flash. And I'm not sure when it will be fixed, and that's OK. <laughs> I have traveled through, the, through there numerous times since it started flashing, and it's been wonderful. There are stop signs in addition to the flashing light, and everyone stops and goes in the correct order of arriving <coughs> at the stop sign at the intersection. So I don't think I sit there more than 90 seconds before proceeding. Traffic flows wonderfully. And so I hope it's a long while before it's fixed. Well, can I Thank fill you in on that? <laughs> so. Actually, it'll be a short while, Mary, because here's what's happening there. The box itself is burnt out. We have one on order. A temporary one will be installed, and a new one's on order. And what we're seeing in various parts of town is <coughs> the street lights that go back to the 1970s. So that'll be um, more of a short-term thing until the new box comes in. So. My experiences haven't been quite as positive as Ms. White's, but at least we're all getting practice on how to deal with the we actually the multi stop had, uh, we actually rules. Had, we had actually had police there over the weekend just directing traffic because mm. it's become quite uh, of a challenge there in heavy traffic. So that's something that the chief and I are right on top of. So and we've been involved with that this week. It's just that we don't we don't keep it. We don't keep an inventory of those boxes. We have to order them. They take a while to get in. And you never know when one's going to blow out like that one did. But it's beyond repair. So, OK, hey, anything else? Tom White. Tom White, Summer Lane. I had a suggestion regarding the milling and paving. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe if, uh, <clears throat> if an expert in that engineering as far as making the repair of a cracked road if his services or her services were were sought to determine what it would actually cost to make that kind of repair versus what we're doing now it might help you know the public to you know make a decision regarding that because if it's very costly then it's going to translate to to a lot less of mileage that's it, exactly right. You know, yes. So uh, if, if they had that kind of education, it might be something we'd have to put off for, for the future when right. maybe things subsided and a, a bigger project could be tackled. So you're absolutely right, Tom. And that's the dilemma. And that's what Sally started to speak about here. I am looking at a possible solution, but I didn't. Well, I wasn't going to say it because you know, I agreed to have the engineer come in. Mm. But crack sealing is a solution. So in other words, after a road is paved in a few years, if you see these what we call spider cracks, there is a crack seal product that fills the cracks, that smooths everything out, prevents the moisture from going into the road underneath the surface, and that over the course of time becomes a more corrosive factor. The problem with crack seal though is that crack seal is not manufactured in the color gray, it's in the color black. So as the road turns gray, the black comes out and it, the optics of it sometimes don't look too good. 
but that really is the solution to preserve the road to elongate its life cycle. Right. Well, that would be very important to me because according to Mr. Bodwell, six or seven months ago, when he mentioned, you know, the roads, the way we're doing them last 10 years and we're bonding for 17, that doesn't make sense. So, so to Tom's point, though, if we're doing 11 miles of roads this year, that mm. could be four miles of roads with the cost. That's what Tom well, I, I understand the balance. That's why, you know, let's 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 get some information at the town meeting and I will go with the wisdom of the town right. meeting and hopefully so more than agree. seven people will show up so we agree we'll have andy here yes okay very good all right seeing no other comments all the motion to adjourn i'll make the motion all second right. all those in favor all right. all right thank you very much ladies and gentlemen have a good evening the preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of north haven Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at NHTV.com.